Hi, hi everybody. Welcome to uh, CAD CAM and more specifically learning how to use Autodesk Inventor uh, which is uh, to say the least an epic program. There's lots to learn uh, but it's really really impressive when you get the hang of it. Now obviously you're all coming from different backgrounds. Some of you will have used it before, some of you won't. So I'm going to split these tutorials into videos that uh, kind of start with the basics completely and then progress from there. So if you know what you're doing feel free to skip ahead um, if this is stuff you haven't seen before you need to go through them all uh, in the order as well that I'm kind of recorded them and put them on YouTube uh, really really important you follow every step alright so as with every video tutorial if you can't do something you know pause it rewind the video press play again just don't sit there like a moron with you uh, just watching the whole video from start to finish before you attempt anything alright try it, pause it, repeat, it should be fine. Alright, first thing then, uh, you're going to have to load up Inventor. Let's get rid of that. So Inventor has this icon here. I don't know if this is going to work. There we go. Zoom in apparently. Um, it should be sort of over here on your screen towards the left hand side. Just double click it once. It takes sometimes two or three minutes to load. Don't keep clicking it because you'll load several versions and then none of them will load. It'll freak out. All right. Anyway, when you've loaded it up, um, our aims for today, I'm going to basically show you nothing else but how to manipulate the, the view. Um, so to be able to zoom in and out on a 3D model, to be able to move it left and right, to be able to look inside the model, and to be able to do all sorts of view related things. As soon as you can control the view, then you can get on with how to actually start drawing. So for the once you've loaded it up, just click OK if you've got any weird screens appeared that look differently to mine. Um, but up here you should have these options. So go to Open, and what you're actually going to do just temporarily is go to the following location and load a model that I've already made. So I'm going to go to the Student Drive, which would be called M on yours, uh, Tech. Oh, sorry. So let's do that again. Student Drive, uh, you want the folder called Tech, because that's the subject and Mr. Winter Year 9 Electronics and then MP3 Speaker Design and Make 2017 and Mr. Winter 3D CAD Design 1 and what I want you to load is this one here called mp3speaker.iam that's going to load up all of loads of different parts this will all make sense a bit later on Okay, you'll probably get a message saying something like that, just click yes, that's fine, and it'll be a little bit slower on your computers, but eventually it should load and you'll get something like this. Okay, so this is a model, um, I'll show you the real thing hopefully if you're in the class with me now, but this is a 3D printed model for an MP3 speaker uh, with lights in it that respond to the music, and this is something that my year nines are doing. now this is the standard I want you guys to be at by the end of this enrichment course and this is called CAD CAM this enrichment as well so it's not just designing this on the computer and that be the end of it I'd love you to be at the stage where you can actually go and make this on the 3D printer or the laser cutter which are CAM machines anyway this video is supposed to be just about how to manipulate the view so I'm gonna shut up talking about random things so uh, okay first thing to use probably is up here on the right hand side this is called your view cube and if you click on parts of it say the front it will rotate your view to that point there if I click the arrow at the top that will look down on the top this will look at the left hand side uh, it's pretty self-explanatory and these two arrows here will spin it so it's orientated back to what you're used to okay so the view cube is quite useful for straightening up your view and looking at very specific angles um, the next skill I'm going to teach you is how to zoom in and out. Now, uh, the easiest way is with the scroll wheel, the middle wheel on your mouse. If you just roll that backwards and forwards, you'll see, and don't don't go mental because it will disappear. Uh, just gently, a couple of clicks at a time, you can zoom in and out. Okay. Uh, the next thing you might want to know how to do is to move the whole view left to right in case you had, say, something over here you needed to look at as well. Simply just click the middle mouse button in for that and hold it and drag. Okay, so practice doing that. So that's really useful if like you zoomed in and when you zoom in it keeps going off to the left. You can click, bring it back to the center, now zoom in. Okay. 
uh, and remember every now and again practice with your view cube as well whatever uh, okay the next thing I'm going to show you some of you will have done this you'll have gone whoop, and zoomed right the way out to infinity so you can't actually see your object anymore uh, luckily there's a tool for that it's this one over here if you click that little circle it should zoom all so that will if you've lost your object whatever you've modeled in 3d virtual space clicking that button will bring it all back into view okay so that's your kind of savior uh, right the next things I'm going to show you um, if you hold down shift on your keyboard and then click and hold your middle mouse button you will be able to manually and then just move your mouse around you can manually rotate your view around okay now I tend to not really use the view cube very often I tend to use a combination of middle button to move middle button to zoom in and out middle button and shift to manipulate okay so just spend a few minutes practicing looking at the details on this object all right look at the bottom look at the side zoom in of, at points of interest and just get comfortable with this because you're going to be doing a lot of maneuvering this is a 3d package if you've never used it before you're going to be zooming in and out going left and right all the time okay right I'm assuming you've played with that now and you've got good at it. Uh, I'm going to show you a couple other things that are quite useful. Um, if you want to zoom your view to look with reference to a particular part, there is a tool for that. This one here is called Look At. If you click it and then click on something you want to look at, so let's say it has to be a flat surface, but let's say the this bit here, it will spin your view so you're looking down onto that particular part. Okay, so look at. All right, it, you can play around with it. Um, sometimes it's just as easy to use the cube. Okay, there are all sorts of other uh, options under here, but these mainly do what I've shown you. Um, if you want to get quick with this program, do it all with the mouse and the shift key. You can do everything with the middle button and the shift key when you get good. All right, okay, so that's how you manipulate your basic view, but that's not really good for us engineers sometimes we need to be able to look inside the objects we've made um, and inspect what's going on inside or look at individual parts and, and, and go from there so obviously you won't know how to make any of this stuff yet but at some point you will uh, but what we will learn is that this all our models are made up of separate 3D models that we kind of glue together and we call that assembly we're assembling parts together now what if I just wanted to look at my plastic part um, you can do that in Inventor. Select it by left clicking. So it's all gone blue. That means you're showing interest in this object. And then right click on it, and you've got this option here called Isolate. Okay. Uh, sometimes you'll get that message. Just click OK. What that has done, as you can see, is made this the only thing visible. It's temporarily, it's not deleted, it's just made invisible all the circuitry, all the speakers, everything but the point of interest. Okay. So that's really good. Like, now I can see all this detail inside that I couldn't see before because the circuit board was in the way. Uh, if you are done with that, you can just right click on it again and choose undo isolate and you'll see that brings everything back. Okay, so again, if I wanted to just look at my circuit board, I'd select it, right click, isolate, and now I'm just working on this one bit. You'll notice over here in the left hand side, and you'll get used to using this later, all the things that we can't see are greyed out and only the ones that have got colour next to them, in this case main PCB, are visible. Okay, so right click, undo, isolate. So practice that. Um, another thing that's sometimes useful is rather than isolate the whole thing, you might just want to look, say I want to look at it without that speaker being there. I don't want to have to delete the speaker to do that, but I can just make one object temporarily invisible. So select it. Um, now for some reason they've changed it in this version but select it and you'll see it highlights the component over here on the left hand side right click on speaker here and untick this box that says visibility okay so speaker still exists it's just invisible and allows us to now inspect inside all right now this is really really powerful imagine you were designing something like an iPhone or an Android phone or a car a car engine you had all the bits going on inside the device that you can't actually see from the outside uh, this mode allows you to, to zoom in all right uh, final couple of views I'll show you and that will wrap up the end of this lesson um, along the top here we've got all sorts of different tab toolbars but we're dealing with views today so we're going to look at the one called view 
uh, we'll learn what all the others do later. Now you've got some options here for how your drawing is presented to start with. Uh, visual style is quite useful. I tend to leave mine in shaded with edges um, and you'll see this draws little black lines around the edges to make them bolder. Yours will probably be in shaded to start with so your object I bet will look a bit like that at the moment. Sometimes when you're doing things particularly like for the laser cutter where you've got like locked together tabs and stuff having shaded with edges turned on is much easier because you can see where different parts end and others begin. And there's all sorts of options here. Um, they do what they say really, so wireframe, you know, again it's a bit hard to look at but in some situations it's quite nice, it shows you like a x-ray view. Um, you've got shaded with hidden edges which gives you an object but shows you like the x-ray through it. Um, generally most of the time you'll use these two. These are just for like illustrating, so if I do watercolour it'll do like a kind of very arty farty kind of fancy picture. Uh, if you were doing uh, designs for your folder you could kind of cheat a little bit here if you're rubbish at drawing you could make it on the computer take a screenshot in watercolor mode paste it onto your page and then it will sort of look like you've done it with your amazing painting skills okay and then we got sketch illustration so that you could print that and then actually shade that in with coloring pencils so it's really really powerful okay or technical illustration which I think looks quite cool as well kind of cartoon style so mess around with these. Um, I would advise against using um, shadows and reflections because they use our computers aren't very powerful and turning on shadows and reflections really increases the likelihood of your computer crashing. Okay, it makes it look pretty when you're working on it, but really only use that if you just if you finished your model and you're trying to get a nice picture for your folder. Otherwise, I'd keep them turned off. Reflections does like reflections you can see all right so really really powerful um, good bit of software again you can change the lighting if you want you know like have it in a I don't know what an infinity pool is well I know what it is but I don't know what it's gonna look like uh, but oh god but basically most of this fancy lighting tends to either crash the program or slow things down I really hope I haven't crashed it I'm just gonna pause the video until it comes back so uh, yeah, it, it did crash. <laughs> um, my computer is more powerful than the school ones as well, so if, that's what I'm saying. Don't get too crazy with the view modes because you'll you might risk ruining your whole model. Uh, and on that note, it's a good time to mention save regularly. This program does a lot, and you have to save regularly in case you lose it. Right, a couple of other things just to show you that are quite cool. You can turn textures on or off. Uh, this tends to make very little difference unless you've used a textured material, but we'll learn about that later. Uh, orthographic is what I'd use while you're actually making your model, but again, you can switch to perspective, and that kind of gives you like what it would look like in real life, as you know, so it stretches away into the distance. All right, uh, but it's not actually as useful when you're trying to construct it. So I would advise while you're building it, put it in orthographic, switch to perspective when you're trying to uh, do fancy pictures for your folder. Okay, um, right, final bit is these guys here, quarter, half, three quarter section views. Uh, these are really powerful. They allow us to sort of slice this in half temporarily. So if I picked half section view, for instance, um, I haven't really got anything flat on my object to pick. I've got a few flat surfaces, so what I'm gonna pick is this work plane here. Uh, we'll learn about work planes and what they are later, but I'm gonna click half section view and click on the X, uh, the YZ plane. And then I'm just going to drag my arrow and hopefully you'll see what happens. There we go. Depending on how far I drag it, so let's get it about in the middle, click the tick. I've now taken a perfect cross section through my object. Now I haven't ruined it, it's literally just sliced the picture. So that there, if you were trying to present how your speaker system is going to work to your boss and you worked in an engineering firm, that's a, a really cool, useful helpful view that's going to show you what's up okay and these other guys pretty much do that as well so if you want to get away from that view you always go back to the menu and click end section uh, so a three-quarter view asks you to pick two surfaces so I could pick that one and move in an amount say to here and click the arrow and then it wants another surface so I'm going to pick that one and bring it down I don't know like that 
Okay, so that's ta as you can see, that's taken a sort of chunk out of it horizontally and vertically, which also looks quite cool. So there's good timing. Uh, so there's lots you can do there. All right, so that's all I want you to do in today's lesson. Practice opening the program, practice loading a ready-made model, uh, practice viewing with the middle mouse button and shift, isolating, making components invisible, uh, changing the setup of how the picture looks, and then using the section views. If you can do all that out, oh, and use the view cube as well, um, you are going to be really finding the next few video sessions a lot easier because um, I'm not going to mention how to do that in those videos. I'm just going to assume you know. Right. Thank you for listening. Go and do it yourself. Um, and if you find out any new features that I haven't covered, please tell me. Uh, I'm always learning stuff about this program. There's so much in it.